Hello and welcome. Please pause the video, read the problem, and try it on your own. All right, so let's see what they tell us here. They tell us that there's two functions. Y equals the absolute value of x minus 3. I like to write these functions as I go. It helps me slow down a little bit. And then we're told that um, 3x plus 3y is 27. So I'll write that one down too. 3x plus 3y is 27. They're graphed on the same set of axes, which is just saying that we throw these two things on the same graph, right? And which statement is true about the solution of the system of equations? So without knowing anything here other than the general shape of an absolute value function, the absolute value function is a V shape. Now, with other function transformations, this is true as well. If you subtract from x, it actually moves to the right. So initially, the V shape would be here, right? It would be two straight lines, not curved like I drew, but shifted one, two, three places to the right. So our absolute value function is going to be right here. And then if we graph this other function, right? Anyway, we do that, maybe we'll write an mx plus b form. Uh, here, we isolate y by subtracting 3x from both sides, and we get 27 minus 3x. Then we divide everything by 3, and we have y equals 9 minus x. This tells us that the y-intercept is 9, and then the slope is negative 1, so we're going down 1 over 1 and so forth. So here, what does that mean? Well, that means that we've got a line that crosses the y-intercept of 9, right up here, but like way up here. Let me just extend this. Because I know it's way up here, because if we plug in 0 to this function, what do we get? Right? If we plug in 0 to the absolute value function, let me move this down so it matches up. If we plug in 0 to that function, it's kind of cool what happened there. Let me clear that off. Uh, we would get y equals 0 minus 3, or y equals the absolute value of negative 3, which is, of course, right, 3. That just means that if we plug in 0 to our absolute value function, the output is 3. So this point, this y-intercept of the absolute value, is 0, 3. And here we have 9 for a y-intercept. So let's say it's like up here. The slope is down 1 over 1. It's actually going to be parallel to the absolute value function here. It's kind of a cool setup of a graph. So we have this function here. And I'm going to drag this over so we can match it up. All right. Actually, let me clear this out of the way because it's kind of cluttering up our graph space here. OK. So what's going on? Well, we can visualize the specifics like I did. And when we do, we realize that they're going to cross at one point. But even if you didn't know that, you have to think about how the lines and basically the letter V can interact. The absolute value function and the line here could meet twice. Right? If you want to imagine if you had a V absolute value function right here with a horizontal line, that would cross twice. It can cross once, like in our situation, or perhaps infinite times if um, the line is a coincidence with one of the sides of the absolute value function. In other words, if it's right on top of it somewhere. So there's three possible solutions here. In this case, we happen to have one solution, this point, right? So we're trying to find what that point is. And if we look at it, um, it looks like 3 is a good candidate for a solution. So 6, 3 is a solution to the system. In other words, it's where the two lines cross because it satisfies both equations. Let's just test that out. In other words, if we plug in 6, 3 to the line, it should balance the equation. Let's plug that in. 6 is x, so 9 minus 6. Does that equal 3? It does, right? So this point does balance the equation. In other words, we can plug it in, and it balances both sides. It should also balance the absolute value equation. Let's try that. If we plug in 6, 3 to the absolute value equation, we plug in 6 for x, and we should get 3 for y. Let's see if that works. So the absolute value of 6 minus 3 is the absolute value of 3, which, of course, is 3. Right, so 3 does equal the absolute value of 3. This is true. So we plugged in 6 for our input, for x, our output was 3. It is on both equations. Um, no other point is on both lines. For example, the first one, 3 comma 0. If we plug in 3 for x, we do get 0 for y in the absolute value function, but it needs to be on both the line and the equation. So if you plug in 3 to your line, right, 
y equals 9 minus 3, you would get 6, right? Not, not 0 as, as we see here. So that wouldn't work for both. Um, and again, the same thing is true for choice 2. It works for one of them, but not, not both of them. Uh, and here, I, I guess they could meet three times if it was part of the infinite number of solutions, so they meet at three points where the line and the absolute value overlap. Um, but here we're not dealing with that. All right, so the answer is choice three. Hope this helps.